So I will call this meeting to order at the Oak Park Public Library Board. Um, Suzanne, will you take the roll call of the in-person members? Um, Trustee Dr. Lovett is here. Trustee Fairfax is here. Trustee Foss is not here. I mean, not here, here. Trustee Gunguli? Here. Trustee Rogers? Here. And Trustee Fee? Here. Uh, we have an in-person forum. Uh, the first, uh, we will, uh, is there a motion to approve the remote uh, participation of trustees Bloom and Foss. So uh, Maya Second. had her hand up. Okay. Second. Second, seconded by Suzanne. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Uh, it is approved. Uh, remote participation is been approved for Virginia and Ted. Thank you so much. Uh, next order is, is the approval of minutes of our October 22nd regular meeting. Uh, we have those in our packet. Are there any questions or corrections? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Um, Moved by Christina. Is there a second? Second. 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 We'll give it a 10. We'll give it a 10. Any further discussion? Um, do no. If we're not here, if you weren't here, do we abstain? Can you can. You don't have to. Okay. I'm also planning to abstain since I was absent. Understood. Me too. Me too. All right. Uh, that being said, all those in favor of approving the October minutes say aye. 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 Those, those opposed say nay. Those abstentions? Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Uh, I did hear Ted say aye. So for the record, let's make sure that Ted is recorded as a yay vote on that. And those minutes are approved. Uh, next up is public comments. I received no um, no emails in advance of tonight's meeting. I do have uh, here uh, Stephen Jackson. Uh, if you'd like to sit at the table by the microphone, so we can catch so it'll be recorded. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good always be happy. Um, always good to be at home. In Oak Park. So good evening, each one of you. Um, I hope each one of you are well. Um, I just wanted to make a public record of a few things. Um, first, I want to shout out my wife just because she's amazing and she supported me, always has, always will. Um, but I want to point out some inconsistencies with our anti-racism strategic plan. I don't know if that's still a document, but it's still on the website. It's still claim, Oak Park Public Library still claims to be an anti-racist organization. So, um, as an employee of Oak Park Public Library for the past eight years, I served the community in um, while I was here in everything that I did. I was a part of several committees and built every department that I worked under, um, which so happened that None of them really ever existed prior to, to coming to my um, local public library. There's no question that I felt valued as well as several other um, staff members and community members um, by the library. I can say others felt the same way that I, as I had um, as, as speaking with them. But in 2022, this organization took a drastic turn this can be indicated by the data on the retention of people who just so happen to look like me or are part of a historically and traditionally marginalized people group, right? And the creation of several brand new library positions that pose as a barrier as indicated and nothing against librarians. I continue to work with libraries. Libraries are amazing and like the person that I am today at 48, I can attest to the library has added so much, this library has added so much tremendous value to me as a person professionally and as a human being. Um, so I definitely want to be clear with that. But in our anti-racism strategic plan, I don't have to read it, but I do know that we state that structural racism goal is to decrease the negative impact of the MLIS, the Master of Library Information Science degree, on the promotion opportunities and access um, to upward mobility at the library. 
create new and additional investment opportunities for non-MLS holders, but when you create a position entitled um, supervising librarian, that is a barrier. So people can only ascend to a certain level and it poses as a barrier. I wrote a recommendation on this. Um, and gave my, my opinion on it when I was an employee as a director of equity and anti-racism um, on that. Um, but I'm going to go off script just because I know I have a few seconds left, but the members of the leadership team, some of whom, which I, I've worked with and known for over eight years, um, it's really astonishing and I want to publicly address you, Billy and Lee in particular, because you're only two members of the leadership team. When I took time due to medical issues, people who I thought as personal friends and professional friends, and I guess how many people reached out just to check on my well-being? Exactly. People that I've known for over 14 years that work here had, did, so that was about two or three people. But the people who were a part of the team that I was on, so I'm addressing y'all too, Y'all know I've done nothing but pour into you professionally and personally. You can walk out if you want. The truth is hard to hear sometimes. Sometimes it bloodies more than it cuts, right? Am I at time because um, the yes. she's in, well, thank you for allowing me to go a little bit over. But I just want to publicly, I want to look y'all in the eyes and tell y'all that how much that hurt me. I am human. I do have feelings that y'all know my intentions. Y'all know me personally as well as professionally. And to not even have the care and consideration just to say, are you okay? That's it. That hurt. So I just want to publicly do that. I also wanted to point out the inconsistencies with what we say. When I say we, I am a member of this community. I went to high school here. I worked, I worked in this community for over 14 years. This is my library just as much as it's anybody's library. And I'm going to continue to own it. I'm going to continue to work with this library. And finally, thank you for allowing me to go over President. I want to express the appreciation for all professional development that I got throughout this organization that is helping and guiding me to continue to do the work that I've been doing. I will eternally be grateful for that, and I don't minimize that because I couldn't be the person that I am without the value, especially with my background, where the library took a chance on me and added value to me. So I just wanted to publicly say that. Um, I know that I wasn't disrespectful to anybody. That was my intention. My goal was just to come and express how I feel because it seems that no one appears to be listening. But when it's on public record, people can listen. They can go back and listen. So thank you for this opportunity. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. Happy holidays. If you celebrate. And that concludes our public comments. Um, trusty comments and calendar. The December 3rd, the ILA Legislative Meetup at the Chicago Marriott. Uh, Christina, you and I are registered. I don't know if, any, if it is still possible to register, but if anybody else um, would, is interested in attending that, um, we'll, we'll let Susie and Lee know so that um, they can look to see if it's still possible to register for that event. Do we know if it's possible? Because that's one thing I wanted to check on. We can check. OK, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> And then um, our December 17th board meeting at 6.30. Um, I have a few responses uh, to the Survey Monkey regarding the uh, possible topics to cover, um, to, to collect some information on. Um, if, um, <laughs> Folks want to take a chance. I can uh, respond and you know, reply to that this week. I can uh, send it again, um, and just so that uh, I have some time to try and work with folks to pull um, some materials together for us to uh, look at things in December for board development. Um, and from that, then following into our 2025 board. Uh, 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 meeting dates. Is there on page six? So we that is. 
Matt, are these all Tuesdays? Yes. Okay. Do we want to address December and November now or after the election when we have the new board installed? Well, I think that I, I, I understand the, the sentiment, but I think generally speaking, I think we can generally, I hope we can generally agree that no matter what a person's particular um, celebrations of holidays, I think that those two particular dates are going to be problematic for most people's calendars, um, both personally and professionally. Just to yeah. you know that, so I think. Well, of course, we can always change it closer, you know, as we get closer. But I think perhaps it is. It, it could be advisable now to move both of those up a week, mm -hmm. um, being this far out. So that would be the 18th and the 16th of those respective months. Would that would those uh, changes be anybody else have any problems or notice anything else in any of the other dates? Um, what dates are those November? November and December both moving up a week. Moving up a week. Yeah, for those. And it's very possible that the December will, you know, we, we may get to the end of the year and cancel December altogether like we have in many years, but just so that it is on the calendar and people okay. and people can block off the time if need if we do end up meeting. Um, so are there any holidays that we may not have accounted for? I know sometimes um, we, we catch things closer to that if there's, we can make an adjustment now, um, it might just be uh, easier for all involved. And, and Matt, May 27th will be the installation of the new board members? Most likely, yes, because I, uh, I don't think, well, so technically. It would be, it would be the 22nd of April because the election's on the 1st of May, of April. Oh, because yeah, I don't know who chose that day. <laughs> I know. It, it was, yeah, it's, it's. I always thought trustees were shown in May. Generally, we have because usually the meeting that we have in April is before the vote is certified before the election oh, results are certified that makes sense. this time it is very it is very possible because it is exactly three weeks out that that the votes that the voting results could be certified that day as late as that day i think it would probably be wise to keep may as the as the anticipated installation of of the new board um, I, I cannot guarantee, no one can guarantee that the, the votes, that the election results will be certified in time for the April meeting. March is during spring break also. I just want to flag, I can't, I won't be here. Which one? March. Okay. And then uh, the 20, September, the uh, 23rd, that's Rosh Hashanah. Oh, yes. Yeah, we that's a. Plus. Um, as well. That's September 23rd. Yeah. Do we um, want to just move that up a week? Well, we could move it up, or there is the 30th is also a Tuesday. Um, but that might, but that, but that would put us close, you know, in the middle of our first budget round. Yeah. Our first, like, real budget mm -hmm. meeting that would be probably September and give staff some, an extra week to, as opposed to cutting them short a week of. <laughs> making adjustments. Right. That's what um, I think that is, yeah. So September 16th instead of the 23rd. Yeah. Thank you for catching that. And then we want to do March 18th instead of the 25th. Um, because it's spring break. Because it's spring break. March 18th. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Yeah, because spring break, it's Seems seems sensible, but that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of chaos for a lot of families. Chaos for a lot of families, and and for both, and I'm sure some staff as well um, uh, would probably appreciate not having to worry about that us meeting for that. So, so we're going to do the third Tuesday for March. 
for March 15th, September 16th, and then moving November and December up a week. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. with, with all of those changes, with all, with all of those changes, is there a motion to approve the count, the, the meeting dates as with those changes of, four, of those four months? So moved. Moved by Virginia, seconded by Maya. Um, are there any further discussions or questions? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Thank you, everyone. Um, any other trustee comments? Okay. Then we will move into our interim co directors reports. I would like to know, I mean, do we want a motion to have? Oh, yes. Um, is, we do have our financial audit presentation, and we can, if everyone is comfortable, we can move that item up to, to be the next one to have that presentation and then release our, our good friends from, uh, good friend from Sikich to, to have the rest of his evening and not have to wait for us. So, um, do we need a motion? No, it's, it's, a, it's a discussion, it's not an action, so we can move that up. Well, good evening, everyone. It's, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's nice to officially meet everyone. My name is Tom Sawicki. I'm a director of the We are the auditors for the library's December 31st, 2023 fiscal year end. So thank you for giving me a few minutes tonight to go through the audit results. Uh, I know she's not in the room, but I'd like to thank Linda Barnett as well. She's our main point of contact for the audit work, um, and she's very thorough um, and a pleasure to work with and um, she really wants to make sure the financial information is accurate and so I really appreciate all of her assistance going through the audit process this year. Um, what we're going to tonight are uh, the two documents we uh, issued as a result of the audit. The first one being the annual financial report and the second one being the um, auditor's communication to the Board of Trustees. So I'm going to start here with the annual financial report if you'd like to follow along. Um, going through to page one page one of this document, and I think Linda said that your hard copy is just the auditor's communication um, piece, and then the actual annual financial report is just PDF versions in your in your packet, actually. So okay. if you want to follow along, that's where you'll, you'll look at right now, it's just a PDF version. So on page one is the independent auditor's report. Um, as part of the audit, we followed two sets of standards. We followed the um, generally accepted auditing standards issued by the ASCPA and governmental reporting requirements issued by GASB. I'm pleased to note, in accordance with those two standards, we've issued an unmodified opinion on the financial statements that is also known as a clean audit opinion, the highest level of assurance we can provide that the financial statements are free from material misstatement. Uh, flipping past that, starting on MDNA page one, this starts the management's discuss discussion and analysis section of the financial statements. Um, just as the name describes, management discusses and analyzes the financial results during the fiscal year. So Linda did a good job putting this information together. Um, it takes the current year information, compares to the prior year, and then it adds explanations for why some of those balances may have changed from the prior year. So if I'd like to point out if you don't read anything else in detail in the audit report, I'd encourage you to read through at least the MBA section. It has good context to the numbers there. Uh, just one minute. I think the attachment that we got is the same. As, it's it's as the same as this. We just brought you a hard copy in case you wanted to follow along. And oh. then the, the but he was talking about the, the, the longer. It's yes. in the packet. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. It's not? No. Because when you look at page 55, that's it's only page 55. That's the independent audience report, but it doesn't. It starts on page 51. That's okay. Um, okay, there it is. Okay, there it is. Okay, I'm sorry. Are we looking, we're looking at page 60, right? Page 51. 51. In the board, in the, in the board packet. Page 51. Yeah. Okay. My, 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 no, no, no problem at all. Um, so if you flip then past uh, the management discussion and analysis section of the report, go to page four, four of the, the report, I'm not sure what page you have in your document. Uh, page 58. Okay. Uh, this starts the basic financial statements um, to the audit report. 
So page four is the statement of net position for the library. Um, basically, it's the balance sheet, what we call the entity-wide level. So it includes all of your, your financial activity in this governmental activities column. Um, but it also includes some of your long-term activity like capital assets and your long-term obligations there. Uh, page five is this, the following page is the statement of activities. Um, this is essentially the income statement 67. for what we call the entity-wide um, level there. This basically shows how your net position changed during the fiscal year. So down at the bottom, you can see that the net position decreased from the prior year by about $535,000 on the entity-wide level for the library. Page six then starts what we call the fund financial statements. It's broken up into your major and non-major columns. The major fund is your general fund or your main operating fund there. So looking specifically at that column, you go down to the bottom in the fund balance section. You'll see there's an unassigned fund balance of about $5.7 million for the general fund. And what I do is I compare that to your fund balance policy. Your fund balance policy states that that number, the unassigned fund balance, should be between 40 to 48 percent of your general fund expenditures. That number 5.7 represents about 48 percent of your expenditures in that fund. So you're right in, right in line with your fund balance policy there. So just to point out, just to monitor that going forward, if you've got you know, somewhere outside of that range, just you know, make a determination how you're going to use that fund balance going forward. Um, looking then to page eight, this is the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balances for the governmental funds. Again, looking at the general fund column here, this shows how your fund balance changed. Instead of saying that page, could you say what's at the top of the page? So yeah. just don't page seventy is what we're on. Page seventy. Yeah, it's the Thank statement you. of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so again, this is broken out by your general fund and then those non-major columns there. So looking at your general fund, down at the bottom, shows how the fund balance changed for your general fund. It decreased by about $311,000 there, um, ending the year at about $6.97 million in total fund balance for the general fund. Those are all the basic financial statements for the library, starting on page 10, or we, sorry, the two pages after that, there are the notes to the financial statements. Basically, these are just additional information to supplement and context to some of those numbers we went through there. Some of the key, page 72. Some of the key, some of the key areas there. I'm going to flip past that, though, um, and go to the schedule called Schedule of Revenues, Expenditures, and Changes in Fund Balance, Budget, and Actual. That's right after the flip notes. Do I not have any flip notes? What page is that? On yours. Uh, 30. 30. Uh, page 92 on the PDF. Great. So this is essentially a budget versus actual um, schedule for your general fund. So it's good to see kind of how the fund performed during the fiscal year compared to how you budgeted for that at the beginning of the year. Uh, the right-hand column there is the actual results during the fiscal year. You can see down there at the bottom, as I mentioned, a decrease in fund balance of about 311000 during the fiscal year. So right to the left of that is how you budgeted for it. Actually a decrease of about 1.5 million. So the fund actually outperformed how you budgeted for that fund during the year by about $1.2 million. Uh, the last schedule I want to point out here is two pages after that, um, page 32 of my report. So 94, I think it was, um, the schedule of employers proportionate share of the net pension liability. This relates to the IMRF plan, um, it's the defined benefit pension plan for the library's employees there. So for the 2022 column, this shows what the, net, the proportionate share of the net pension liability is. It's about 1.3 million. Last year was actually an asset of about 5.7 million. That large swing there is because of the poor market conditions. In 2022, if you guys recall, the market was drastically down during 22. So that really widely fluctuated that number there. Um, and we would anticipate that in 23, that number should revert back closer to, to zero or a, a lesser liability there, actually. The key number to look at, though, is down at the bottom, 96.67%. That represents the funded status of the IMRF plan. So IMRF is one of the best funded plans in the state. So no concerns there from a funding perspective for the library employees under the IMRF plan. Um, so those are the key takeaways from the annual financial report I wanted to run through. I quickly just wanted to touch on the other report we have um, this evening, the auditor's communication to the Board of Trustees. That's the hard copy you should have in front of you as well. So 
this document serves a couple purposes. The first being it has the required communication from us um, to the board. We call that a SAS 114 letter. Um, so these are just some key matters we're required to communicate um, under auditing standards. It also includes any adjusting journal entries we had as part of the audit process. Um, please note we only had two adjusting journal entries we identified during the audits, and I will note that both of those entries actually were typical entries we do assist a lot of our clients with posting, so really there was no variances or corrections of errors that we actually identified during the audit process. So um, again, testament to how Linda got from financial statements prepped for us um, for this year. Um, the other key piece in this document is at the end, it's called the management letter. It starts on page seven. What this is, is that um, if we identify any what we call deficiencies in internal control or any other recommendations for improvement, we'll include it here in the management letter. Happy to know we had no new comments during 2023. There were three comments from 22. Two of those were addressed and have been implemented. There's just one remaining comment related to what we call segregation of duties. And just to point out that that comment is pretty common for the size of the entity you guys have. So it's very typical to have that in this management letter for a lot of our clients as well. So um, the key there is just to kind of look at your controls. I know Linda's doing this already and just see how you can segregate those duties as much as possible with the, the, the number of people on staff. So, um, so again, nothing, no other, um, like I said, uh, recommendations for improvement or deficiencies we identified throughout the audit process. So um, those, were, those were the key points I wanted to run through this evening uh, for the audit for 2023, and I'd be happy to address any questions you all have tonight. Uh, this just seemed to be a little bit later in the year mm -hmm. than we normally get it. Was there a particular you know, uh, other issue? Because it seems like everything on our end went, went smooth. I'm just wondering if there was a... Yeah, so... Because I know this goes to the village too, so... Exactly, and that was the main driver of the reason for the delay. So we cannot okay. issue the library report until the villagers report is complete because ah. that IMRF plan is what we call a cost-sharing plan. Mm -hmm. So the library and the village employees are both on the IMRF plan. So we cannot issue the library report until the village report is done. Um, this past fiscal year, the, the village had some significant turnover in the finance department, which caused delay on their end we could not do anything about that unfortunately so um, that's what was the main driver for the little bit of delay in, in getting the reports issued for this fiscal year and it's then it's the legal relationship that there's like not a way for us to it's a, get yeah. away from that it's, yeah we are, exactly. it's the way the setup is between the two entities yeah correct okay. mm -hmm. that's what I that's what I had a feeling it was but mm -hmm. I just was I just wanted to ask yep this for clarification so, no, I'm as as you know. The, these reports are always you know a little interesting, but also very dense and above me in a lot of ways. But I'm always glad when it comes and there's generally uneventful. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Does anyone else have any questions for our guest? What is AJE number 02? On page 3, under corrected and uncorrected misstatements, and it's the last thing says, in addition, none of the misstatements corrected by management were material to each opinion unit's financial statements taken to hold, with the exception of AJE number 02. Yeah, so as I mentioned, there were two adjustment journal entries we identified during the audit process. So if you flip two pages past that, mm -hmm. that's the list of the two entries we have there. So AJE number two, um, oh. that's what is, is referenced there. Um, and due to the materiality of those numbers, we have to note that on page three, that it was, it was material adjusting journal entry. But as I mentioned, that's one of those entries that we do assist with our clients with posting on, on most of our clients' financial statements. So that's related to that IMRF um, pension plan um, activity that occurred during the fiscal year. Uh, we, we look at a lot of that, a lot of these, um, and post a lot of these adjustments throughout the fiscal year, so it's typically a lot easier just for us just to post those, um, honestly. But um, that's notated there just because it's a material entry that we posted during the audit process. Okay. Uh, Virginia or Ted, do you have anything? I, I don't want. I want to make sure you're not left out. No, nope. thanks. 
Okay. If no one has any other items, uh, I think we can excuse him, excuse him uh, and let him back to the rest of his evening. All right. Sounds Thank good. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. I did want to um, go back to board comments. Um, I did I email something to everyone uh, over the weekend. It has been something I've been working on. I talked to with Maharima about it last uh, week. And after several attempts of the longer versions that I felt were getting away from me, I wanted, we had, you know, we are all feeling a lot of ways um, in the last two weeks as things have developed. Um, but in the past, this board has, the board has taken action um, in response to situations of, uh, that are affecting our country. And I, this is something I'd, I'd like to read in and I, and I would, with everyone, if everyone around the board is okay with that, I'd like us to um, release this um, on our site for, um, for the public. And the statement is as follows. In October of 2022, the Oak Park Public Library Board issued a resolution in response to spreading hostility towards libraries, library staff, and the principles of free access to library materials. In light of the presidential election results, we reaffirm that resolution and join with ALA President Hull's call for everyone who loves libraries to stand with the ALA's efforts to protect all Americans' freedom to read. And I included a, a link to our original resolution. Will we be including any links to the ALA initiative? <clears throat> Sorry. I, I think that would be entirely appropriate. Okay. I, I have a, okay, uh, this is so minor, and I just want to put it out there as a thought. You know, I will be the jerky wordsmither. Um, pres ALA president's call instead of for everyone who loves libraries, because it sort of slows down the momentum, call to stand with the ALA's effort to protect all America's, Americans' freedom to read. She specifically said everyone who loves libraries okay. in her that, which is why That's I, fine. it's just a is, very direct and more, I, I've actually find it just a little bit more powerful because it is a specific call to action. And if you like stop the call to action. Sure. I understand that, but I was, I was, I was. That is fine. I was, I was using her, uh, the president's language. I will not, I will not disrespect <laughs> our ALA president. I, I just had uh, recommendations for adding two years so that you say in light of the 2024 presidential elections and then saying the 2022 resolution can be found here just to distinguish between those two things. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. I will do that and I will forward the language to um, Susie and Lee for- Thank you. But otherwise I, I appreciate you writing it out, man. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, any, then uh, are jumping back up to staff reports, which I believe begins on page seven of the PDF. Oh, unless the, our, our interims had anything of specific. So we then will go into our strategic priorities report. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to highlight a few things in there. Um, <clears throat> this was another successful season of Book Bike. In October, we uh, Book Bike season came to a close after seven, that's seven months, which you think you could ride a bike for seven months in, <laughs> in this climate um, of engagement across the village. This was our first season with two book bikes, uh, an e-bike, an e-assist bike, and a regular bike. Um, it, we facilitated 115 visits, representing a 21% increase uh, from 2023. And this is our second busiest season ever. 
Um, the, the events are ranging from small neighborhood block parties to pop-up partner locations. Um, and so this is a really busy year. I want to give out um, a special recognition, it's not in this, to Sarah Yale, who's been really spearheading this initiative. She has since taken another role in the library. Um, she was ready to kind of sunset her book by cat and um, do something different. So we're excited to see what's to come. Um, in October, uh, six staff members from various library service areas, um, we attended the Illinois Library Association Conference in Peoria, Illinois, which was more delightful than I thought it would be. Uh, it was action-packed. Um, these conferences are so important for us. It's uh, libraries uh, across the state of Illinois. And we get together and we are able to network. We're able to learn with one another. Um, I, uh, I, along with uh, Director Beatrice, uh, attended the uh, awards banquet and we sponsor an award, uh, the Debbie Dollar Prizer Marketing Award, um, on behalf of the Oak Park Library. And then in October, our older adult librarian, Ian, attended the Association of Bookmobile and Outreach Services, AVOS, conference in Indianapolis. Um, he was, you know, kind of attended sessions on providing leaders advisory, advisory services for patients with dementia, along with um, sessions about lobby stops at senior facilities. Um, and then our staff recognition is for library assistant and Victor, who has been offering outstanding customer service, um, something that he can say, says that he's learned the importance of from his dad. Uh, he, Victor works in our adult services and can be helped seeing helping patrons, printing, faxing, scanning, and other technology on the third floor. So we really appreciate all of Victor's work. Um, also during October, uh, which was Hispanic and Latin Heritage Month, we invited community members to join us at the library for a really um, wonderful experience, an Afro-Puerto Rican Bamba experience. It was um, very rich and we had this is the oldest form of music of African descent in Puerto Rico. Served as both, um, served both for um, Sorry, I just lost my thing. This program was brought together approximately 90 community members, and it was a full cultural emotion. Um, attendees learned about the history, the instruments, rhythms, and the nature of the stuff. Um, so this, I'm sorry, in October, uh, Special Collections had its first Halloween open hours, which is something that I've wanted to do for years, <laughs> um, but it went fabulously. Um, we collaborated with Oak Park local history enthusiast Anna Maria Manuel um, and library staff from all of the library, public services, facilities, IT, and community or communications. Um, this has been our most well attended open house we've ever had in special collections. I believe it was like something like 80 visitors. So that was fantastic. We had a lot of fun with that. Um, the collection staff has been very busy uh, teaching and um, taking classes and networking opportunities. So uh, Dantine McPherson Joseph and Kathy Sexton spent the month, uh, month doing, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I love you start that again. Um, so, Dantine um, taught a class, a session of conducting a diversity audit um, of your collections and ordering where to start. Um, it was part of a three-week how to build inclusive collections course offered by Library Journal and School Library Journal Professional Development. Um, Kathy attended the Library Journal Day of Dialogue where she heard authors uh, discuss forthcoming books. Um, and publishers talking about uh, books coming out in the spring. And then our um, bibliographic services supervising librarian, Colleen White, attended the SWAN cataloging working group um, in October. And this group supports SWAN uh, by providing input on cataloging standards. Um, IT has been very busy this month um, in recognition of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. The IT team engaged staff in security awareness initiatives throughout October. Um, system support specialist Jack Pfeiffer printed numerous informational posters, uh, which were displayed all over the library. Um, the team also initiated staff training on phishing emails um, and then uh, focused on weekly emails, focused on security awareness. Um, 
and then work with Ginger Slade to actually do a raffle for staff participation. That's the first time we've done that, um, and it worked like gangbusters. <laughs> Um, so, and a special thank you to uh, website and IT specialist Josh Soto um, for his work. He analyzed most of the emails that were submitted by our staff as part of the campaign. So we are very appreciative of that. Um, a department spotlight. So IT, our t IT team is fantastic. Um, provides not only invaluable support to fellow staff members, but also critical services to our patrons. Um, under the leadership of Rafael Ber and I always forget this, Baronowitz, um, for Manager of Information Technology, um, the team is constantly focused on providing high quality support and working collaboratively with other service areas. Any questions? Uh, yeah, how about the staff demographics? Uh, so on page nine, under the engagement, you talk about the fact that out of the 16 staff members who have separated from the library in 2024, so far 15 identified as BIPOC. Uh, you say here yourself that it requires further attention, and my question is, what is the nature of this attention? What are we doing about it? Um, I mean, the number is shocking, um, and, and we at LT are starting to have discussions around this. Um, we are able to attract talented BIPOC staff members, um, but we have an issue in retaining them, and that's for a variety of reasons. You know, people get better jobs, people, we've had staff who have left the state, um, but it is definitely something that we need to keep in mind going forward um, and something that we're really looking forward to working with the new ED um, to figure out all of the reasons and address this. So be your Lee, your understanding from being on the search committee for the new ED is how when do we when would you say we're expecting to have fingers crossed a new ED in place? Um, optimistically, I'm hoping sometime around April. So that gives us six months. Do you think that the um, trajectory of 15 out of 16 BIPOC, like staff members leaving the library, is an issue that can wait for six months? Because I don't think so. I mean, I will be gone as of May, but um, I, I, I would like I don't know. I, I think it's deeply troubling to me. Is, I, I would love to hear from my board, fellow board members about something like that. No, I, I was going to ask, and I, I don't think Billy, I can't see, but I don't think Billy's in the room. If we have, and this is not, not that the board will have it, but do we have like exit interviews or things that we can use as a, a starting place to dig in and see if we see any, anything across the board um, that we can address before we have a new ED or at least have things that we've seen in those exit interviews that we can line up for that person to say, hey, you know, we, we've recognized this. These are the things that we saw in the exit interviews um, that might give us a, a start to looking at, at why folks are exiting. Um, if it's that we are training BIPOC library professionals um, and they are moving on to other libraries and other roles and escalating themselves in their in their profession. Um, that's fantastic that we're putting that many BIPOC library professionals out in the world. But I, I agree with Matarima. I would I would like us to work on retention there as well. And if we have any clues, um... we would not like this is something that's being actively discussed between LT and MT. Like, we are not going to wait until a new executive director to address this. Um, Thank you. But 
you know, I, I will admit we've been a, a year of turmoil. So, you know, there have been other things. It's been a very emotional time for staff. And so I think LT and MT need to sit down and really kind of discuss like all of the possible reasons that this is happening. But we would, of course, not wait until NED comes to address any of this. OK, thank you, because I mean, you're I mean, I think many of us on the board have felt uh, a fair amount of that turmoil for this last year too but i think the fact that if it's a tur turmoil that's felt across the staff of the library but 15 out of 16 people who are actually leaving our bipoc it's a turmoil that is being felt disproportionately so um i you know i really appreciate that you're having this conversation i can't imagine if my experience has anything <laughs> Has taught me anything that I cannot imagine that these conversations are going to be easy or fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I would just personally appreciate as many updates as possible about how this conversation is going. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a nice ask of just like if we could kind of receive regular updates around this. Like I, I would like to keep an eye on it. Um, it's pretty concerning, and especially because the, since the board. You know what we're looking at is a month at least a month behind if not more so i think we're not you know yeah it would be nice to to really focus on this i think it's a concern um and i appreciate virginia's ideas of um exit interviews are exit, are exit interviews done when people leave sometimes it depends on when they leave i mean you know one of the people that's in this chart is, is jocelyn right you know, I mean, she was a person of color who was who was who has left the library. You know, I don't think there was an exit interview. We have people do resign um, in different ways where there isn't that opportunity. So I think in the report, you know, Billy wrote that this is a nuanced thing. Not everything is as clear cut, you know. Um, but this is, you know, HR has the data on who leaves. You know, I we're not. Lee and I are not privy to people's, you know, who's BIPOC and who's leaving. Um, we see that, you know, the, the status is but how someone identifies, you know, that's, this is a report that, um, that is coming out of HR and was brought to us about a, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think in my head though, like I am also thinking of the conversations we've had around anti-racism and it is like, I'm, yeah, this is a metric that is scary to see and, and we need to pay attention to it. I would also like to suggest that it's never not nuanced. Mm -hmm. The lives of BIPOC people, like the lives of everybody, is multifaceted and there are always multiple reasons. But if given that it's not a 15 out of 16 uh, members of the library stop our BIPOC, the fact that 15 out of 16 who are leaving our BIPOC um, is still something that needs to be taken really seriously. And I think that the argument that there are nuanced explanations, I think I'm just going to grant that that's true. Thank you for pointing that out. But and as a BIPOC myself, why, they, why someone leaves, you know, I, like I know. Jocelyn leaving was nuanced. There's nuance there, right? Well, Jocelyn's yeah. one person, right? So there are there, there, there are numbers, you know, and I wouldn't talk about stuff. other personnel issues. We don't discuss personnel, so you know um, that is that is one that you know there is some nuance behind. Hey, um, Susie, as I'm asking as a person of color. I'm asking if your intention right now is to explain to me straight up that there are multiple and complicated reasons that people leave a workplace. Is that your intention right now? Okay. Good. Any other questions or comments regarding the strategic priorities report? We have the additions and terminations report. And then staff changes as well. The next item is our financial reports. We are approaching the end of the year. So 
Susie or Lee, is there anything you want to point out uh, in particular from the uh, from the financial? Okay. Then I'm beginning on page. I think we have the cash disbursements journal on page 29. Are there any questions related to any of the uh, transactions in the disbursements journal? All right, is there a motion to approve the resolution on disbursements? Uh, it's on page 50. So moved. Moved by Ted, is there a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. It is approved. We'll move on to additional reports. Uh, uh, I go. Um, okay, I was there. I, that was a week ago, and I think I shared last month that we are kind of in this level setting space, I would say. Um, we're thinking about doing an event still. Uh, this might be news to you guys, I'm sorry. Um, but I think there's a lot unclear. I think there's a desire to get some things figured out around communication and leadership within the committee. Okay. Uh, COG was originally scheduled to meet uh, the day after the election, but when that had been noticed, it was canceled. And a uh, new date had not been rescheduled. It may not meet until the new year. Uh, Planet Green. Planet Green, I believe that uh, the board received a report on the COP conference in Baku, Azerbaijan. And I don't know if you uh, followed any of the, uh, there were a couple of videos that were produced uh, by the people who were there at COP in Azerbaijan, including uh, our village president and uh, five, five students, three of them from Oak Park River Forest, uh, one from uh, Thornton uh, in the far south side, and one from the Chicago Math and Science group. And... Uh, those five young people uh, were just just fantastic. Um, and it was a very, very strange event because uh, the person who was the host for the Azerbaijan climate conference was the former, former energy minister of Azerbaijan. And Azerbaijan is a, is a petro state. So it was a very, very strange event. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Um, I did see some of the coverage on, on Facebook of, of some of the events, and it was clearly a well-attended um, event with um, hopefully some good, some good lessons will come home from that. Um, Friends of the Library. Did not meet to the best of my knowledge. We've not met this one. Okay. okay. Yeah, it was, <laughs> All right. It was at the afternoon last time. <laughs> All right, uh, unfinished business, the executive director search. Uh, Marjorie, um, would you like to yes, provide please. a report? So I think I, I wasn't here last month, so I'm realizing that it's been maybe four meetings since the last time that we, since the last time that we met. Um, you know, I had sent the board an update via email um, in the third week of October, and I'm, I, I should have mentioned that maybe we can include that in the board packet for this month. Or so can be included in the board pack for next month because I, it's you know like it's a it's an update that I should have given uh, in open session. But for uh, for this month, it is deeply. It's been like really interesting. I don't know. So Suzanne and uh, Ted and Lee are of course all on the on the on the committee. Um, we had our bias training i think since the last time we've talked that was uh that was very interesting and important 
Um, and uh, it will be something that I think the entire board will again go through this training before we, we as a board start looking at any actual application materials. Um, you were there too, weren't you? Yes. And I want to say Christina was there too. Yes. So thank you for everyone for coming. Um, there have been, so the, it's been, it's out, the job listing is out there. They've had, I think, 22, as of yesterday, there were apparently 22 uh, people who've expressed interest, 11 of whom I think have already submitted like resumes or applications. Um, I honestly don't, the numbers are great and I asked for them, but I think what was reassuring for me to hear is that they think that this is good. Mm -hmm. So they've asked for the board and members of the library community to, uh, that's our, um, the search form has asked that we do our best to let people know, to get in touch with our networks, and I think that that would be really deeply important. Um, a couple of things that did come up. Uh, one of the things that Koya reported back to us was that something that they're hearing has to do with the board's relationship with the library stuff. I, it was not represented as board's relationship with the library leadership team, I don't think. Uh, it was about stuff, am I, am I correct? My yeah. recollection is it was about former ED. Yeah. No, I think or it was just. It was just in general about stuff. Yeah, yeah I think I it was about okay. about stuff. Yeah. In in general, so um, the questions I think about discussion that I I, I believe are before our board right now um, are when we think we might start setting staff reparations as an agenda item for us to look at. It's not going to be easy, it's definitely not going to be fun, and it's not going to be quick. So I think that it's been a while since um, the last executive director left us, and uh, I think we need um, a concrete articulation of what it is we expect to do. So I just that's just like an open question about when and how we set, um, you know, repairing this relationship with staff as a question on the agenda, as a matter on our agenda, and how we, what it even looks like. I have zero answers, but do we want to think of a methodology and then figure out how that works for the staff? Or did the staff have any suggestions of where to start? Um, well, I don't, I, I don't want to speak for Lee, for instance, but there was some mention about the possibility of like um, board members showing up, for instance, to staff day, which is on January 31st. And um, I indicated that I thought um, that maybe board members have been a little bit reticent, more reticent than usual, to show up on staff days because we are worried about encroaching on spaces that is for staff members. I, I understood that to be something that we had articulated at some point, but I, I wanted to address this, you know, openly to make sure that we, if I'm wrong or if there's other things or what we thought about that. Um, I also don't know if uh, staff actually, staff members actually want us, you know, at the staff appreciation day. So I don't, I don't know. I would say in the in the past, the the board's attendance at that has generally been. Uh, you know, being there right at the beginning of the day, saying hello, saying thank you, mm -hmm. and then leaving. You know, it has not been a thing that we have attended for the whole day. It has been a matter of us going and saying, you know, expressing appreciation, and then leaving them to their their day. So that, I, I think, would be you know, it's, it is their day, 
um, for them to, to do the work to develop their skills and their relationships <coughs> within this building. Um, I, you know, but yes, I, I think that that has been, that has been, you know, was the, the, inter, the level of engagement that this, you know, pre-COVID was, was the level of, of board engagement on that day. Um, it does seem like on something <coughs> showing up and expressing their appreciation would be appropriate in the way that you're saying at the beginning and then getting out of the way and you know not not being that kind of pretty common right. yeah. yeah so do you think um then can we is there a way that we can think about what do we mean to combine that um with the like if if we i'm it's wondering if it wouldn't make it seem more substantive January, I think. I'm so wondering if it, no, it's okay. I'm wondering if it wouldn't make it seem even more substantive if we could go when we say thanks and be able to say these are some steps that we are taking, you know, like that we say thank you, we see you, we understand it's turmoil, and you've been waiting for a while for us to, you know, like say something to you directly or whatever. So here's an opportunity, maybe, I, I don't know. So that would also give us some time to think about maybe and have a have a sense of what we think is that might be at, at the end of January would give us time to put to develop some ideas and put something in place that might not be if we are able to um, develop something that could be you know something there to to do that that might be a good I mean, that might be a good time to say thank you for everyone and we this is. Our first step in hoping, you know, and trying to redevelop, or re, you know, rebuild this relationship. Um, you'll be hearing from us more as we, as we, you know, engage in some other in some steps follow, that we'll be following. But enjoy your day. That yeah, I mean, I, 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 again, I would say we only do that if we actually have a step, step in vision. Yeah. Like, I don't want to say we're going to take steps again and then not actually have done something. So um, I don't know, working back from January 31st, then what it looks like, what we do, what we do when, or when we have these com uh, conversations. But yeah. um, at the very least, it's important to know that it is um, affecting the job search for the ED. Mm -hmm. And it's affecting staff, and that's really important. So, yeah. Um, um, I, so, uh, can we like articulate a next step, even if it is to do something, so that we can continue with a couple more updates on already care about the. Happily, I I get the distinct impression that. The staff is dealing with a pretty difficult year, in large part due to um, the the end of employment with the executive director. In the meetings with Koya, because I mean it's one of those things where it's like in just general human relations, the person that has been hurt and that perceives the hurt as being done by you know, one party, have they given us an indication of what they would like to see? I mean, I know that's a right. very general thing, but I, I, I kind of them. feel like are you me, I, I'm asking if we have heard from our staff about what they would like to see. And I know it's going to be difficult and it's going to be nuanced. And, you know, while Mary might want, um, you know, the, the the board to acknowledge it, acknowledge the pain that happened, and to get a new executive director as soon as possible. Um, Pietra might say that it would be preferable to do repairing, and it's not going to be like a one answer. But have we heard anything during the search, through the discussions with staff, you know, in these conversations with Koya from our staff? about what would be that first step. I mean, I, I, I think a 
for me, a first step is being, being present and acknowledging that this has been a really tough year. Thank you. And, and just, you know, not being judgmental to any of the staff, right? And, and I mean, I, I came back after Jocelyn, you know, had left and Virginia needed to be, you know, have, have some moments and I did speak with the staff and I did work with the staff and I, but that's like nothing, right? It's a drop in the bucket to, and it's like a very small subset, right? And I, I don't know because I want, I want to know from those who have been injured, those who are feeling the hurt. I think it's that, like a step in restorative practice too. Yeah, to, it, it yeah. Is, but I mean, want. I think that even identifying what, what, who the hurt members are is deeply complicated. We yeah. haven't really talked about how the community members have been hurt in the in the discussion. Feel alienated by the library. Don't feel like they belong in the library. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that also happened around that time. So I think that it's uh, my not to answer the question that you're asking about what is it that staff want. Uh, I would say that it's really complicated. Uh, again, I don't want to speak for anyone, but the, the last time that I asked this question, I believe the answer was that the staff are divided and that it's not, that they're not a monolith. And I think that that might be for us, given that we have not done a staff survey, given that we have not followed through on that, that I think that might be the best case scenario, <laughs> best clearest articulation. Do you think the, the start is a staff survey? I, I mean, I don't, I've been saying that since like March. I, yeah. Yeah. But, we, you know, I mean, but and then I, I thought that part of why we chose Koya was because they had experience in doing the staff Well, we hired surveys. Holistic and they, yeah. and they okay. provided and some, some draft stuff, but okay. it's that it, it was, do, do not we, in a place where I thought was okay. in, a, uh, in a, you know, in just in a, it needed some more work mm -hmm. and before I wanted to share it with the board to, to say, okay. Yeah, I just had a really weird pain. I apologize. Oh, okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um, what? Before. No, I'm okay. <laughs> before I thought it was even worth sharing with the rest of the board for feedback. I thought it was like it, just, it needed. Yeah. If I if I'm if I'm looking at it and going this needs more work, you know, before I get start getting feedback from everybody else, I'm want to do that. So um, okay. I'm going to schedule a meeting with them to. Would do you need support? Yeah, uh, I was going to say, can we double down on that? Because that that had been the original idea, and Madhuri was right. The reason we had put it off, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah. Maya was right. The reason we had put it off For was because it was. Whatever, uh, because we were rolling it into the search yeah. process and we wanted it to fall within that process in a logical space. I think we've now reached the space where it 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 needs to fall in. So if if we need to put some hustle in it and that's on our end, let's let's make that so that it is finalized by the end of the year so that we can go into the beginning oh, of the year. Ready. I want it, I want to get it finalized. By like mid December, I don't I don't want to wait till I want to be in a place where it's set to launch af after New Year's. Because right, like yeah, I want like, to I, make I sure. Don't want to find, so no, maybe please. we need a schedule. Uh, yeah, working yeah. back from that to have it. Yeah, what happens when and who does what when and all of that. And let's get it. Let's it's almost like we need like a a little bit of, of support yeah. in that. Um, mm -hmm. I know that we have three members who are. I, I will just I will just put this out there. Three three people who are working on the search committee, maybe are not the three people the two or the three people who should be working on the survey, just so that work is divided in a fair way. Um, Virginia, would you be willing to work with me on on that? Okay, thank you. And this way, and this way, we can work on it and 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 work with and communicate with holistic and all of that, and it, and we'll have more flexibility with our schedule if it's if it's just the two of us. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll sure go ahead and put out there. I, case with the rest of the board. Um, I I would like us to have all of the actual nuts and bolts of the what we're going to send done before our next board meeting. So Agreed. that any other 
motions of how are we getting it to the people, you know, to the staff, all of that can be finalized in the last two weeks of the year. And like I said, we can feel confident going into that staff day that we know what's going out, when it's being executed, and how that falls in line with the rest of the search process. I agree. And, and, and Koya has been uh, working with affinity groups and working with me and to, 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 to talk with staff. I mean, that, that is ongoing. It's, it's... Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think that, th thanks for bringing that up, Ted. And I think they continue to have um, hold office hours. Uh, I'm not sure about like how, like if people are making, are booking those office hours up or not, but uh, they are they are holding them. Um, so if it feels, okay, can I transition into a couple of other things from sure. because they're all kind of, a little, no, they're all about way. weighty, they're all a little bit weighty. So, you know, I think that they'll, they'll need some conversation. So to, to maybe put a button on that first point, I wanted to say, I think Maya, this to the extent that Koya can report anything about, you know, the effect of all of this on the job search, they said that a third of the people who have gotten in touch with them uh, do not want to refer anybody to the, for the ED position. Okay. A third of the people um, want to hear more, and maybe like a third of the people are interested. So it's pretty from their telling pretty evenly split. Okay. Um, uh, Koya has also said that, um, or it's come up in discussion or whatever, but Koya has also said that they uh, will probably um, start organizing maybe office hours for community members so that community members can also um, be heard about what this process is since we're learning how much the executive director actually needs to be you know uh, out in the out in the community so that's something that i wanted to say or i wanted to give an update on um there is a question that came up yesterday which uh we on the search committee that couldn't make it because it was on like an off day on a Monday instead of a Friday. Uh, but I think we on the search committee thought it might be best to bring it to the full board, which is do we as a board feel like the Oak Park Public Library needs a seasoned executive director? Or if, um, or how comfortable maybe are we to see people who may not have been an executive director, but have had other, other kind of strong leadership positions. Um, th does that make sense? Like, or should yeah. we, what should we do? And I will, I, I will maybe, Lee, I don't know if you want to repeat what you, what you felt the staff perspective might be, which is that, or that we need somebody mm -hmm. who's um, you know, I think we definitely feel like we need a seasoned executive director, you know, kind of wanting somebody who's able to hit the ground running. That being said, and, and having a chance to look at some of the applicants, I think if you have those skills, and, and maybe like you're from a large library system where you're not the executive director or the commissioner, but maybe you're on the second tier of leadership, you may be ready for that jump. I think what I said, you know, it kind of depends on the applicant mm -hmm. um, and whether it kind of checks all those boxes. Um, but I feel like I would not want to not look at people who weren't current executive directors, just in case there may be somebody who's, you know, right there and would be willing to step in, but maybe hasn't had that title yet. I would, I would say following up, I mean, I wasn't part of that conversation, but I would say reaching back, uh, Dee Brennan, uh, mm -hmm. who came in um, prior, who was the executive director uh, prior to David, uh, she came from the Boston area and she was uh, a deputy director of the, of the, of the Reading uh, public library. She was not the executive director here, and so then she stepped into that in that role, and I think did a very good job um, for many years, and then went on to lead Rails when Rails founded. 
-hmm. So I think that is a testament to that. And, and that was in many ways, not a, an executive director to us, but the scale of the law, of the system of which she was coming from in many ways was an analyst to the, the scale of our, of our organization um, in terms of how many staff she managed the you know and and the and the, and the scope of services so I, I do hear that wanting to have that experience to think of coming into a situation where we are in a, in a period of heavy transition but again again I, I do want us to keep an open I think it's worthwhile to keep that open mind of you know looking at those at those at, at, at those transferable pieces of you know what is the work that they have been doing what is and, and, and does that look like something that is is bringable to here to to contribute to success here so my two cents of of saying things that don't exactly point us in a direction but just it, just a, a historical context of that that is a, a thing that we have done so I, I think it's, I, I agree with what Lee said. I think in general, it sounds like staff want someone with MLS, but like I saw some of the applications and they, I was really heartened by them. Like I saw some really, I, I was excited. So mm -hmm. I think personally, I would just like to, I need to like do some research to understand other structures because that's something I know I don't know about. Um, but I also am curious, like Koya, when we were looking at them, weren't they gonna help with onboarding the ED or is that, that's part yeah. of it? So I think this board, like we should talk once we really have someone that we're thinking through, like that should be part of our work with Koya is determining like what those mm -hmm. things are that we Absolutely. want them to, like whether it's leadership development or whatever they're maybe not their strongest suit is in, like where we wanna help them out. And a really cohesive, structured, planned out onboarding as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know if um, other members of the social committee will will not agree, but I find that they like, especially in this last meeting, which was just yesterday, that um, Koya is already sort of anticipating the relationship between like ex expertise and support, like what kind of things a person might need support with. And I really appreciated that they, um, again, especially as like uh, Lee, who is of course sort of doing the job right now, <laughs> what, uh, what it takes to, like what are like non-negotiables, right? Like what are actual things that we can expect people to learn and uh, what isn't so. I, the meeting was, our meeting yesterday, I thought was really wonderful. It was really, once again, appreciative of Koya mm -hmm. because they use specifics to help us kind of walk through so they can recalibrate and make sure that they're on the same page we all are on. And it was a really wonderful conversation mm -hmm. in all directions and the, the ways that they articulated people that they, they had interacted with, you know, um, mm -hmm. different areas. Yeah. And then that they might have skills in and where they may not and transferable skills and all of that was really um, quite valuable. So I think our process is, is spot on. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm heartened by that as well as um, some of the specifics we talked about. Um, yeah, I think I think we're I think we're in a really good process. Um, I know uh, Susie has uh, hard out at eight, um, and I did want her to be here while we go through the revised culture strategy statement. Um, so um, I don't I don't want to rush through anything else that's in, that's critical. But I did want to I did want to her to be here to answer questions if possible for that. If there's anything else that is uh, is really critical on that. On no, this, on the uh, no, just a, a, a plea for board members, especially to please distribute the job search among your networks, mm -hmm. um, and a, a, a plea from me that as you have questions or concerns or, or anything, um, to please be please be in touch. Well, really? 
All right, thank you so much. And thank you to the rest of the committee for your work on that. Um, our revised uh, collection strategy statement. Yes, um, so due to um, the new computer and internet use for the public policy um, that was approved last meeting, there is a revision that we need to do in the collection strategy statement um, that kind of fits into that piece. And so the first document literally is the policy as it stands now with uh, the sentence that we need to take out to make it current um, listed. It says page 106 um, in the packet. And it is the line that says it is the decision of the library not to filter internet access. Um, if you remember in the, the previous policy, um, we are uh, finished with an installation of a new firewall um, that will serve multiple purposes, but one of the main purposes is to protect our network from the possibility of hacking and ransomware. And so how this firewall operates is it allows us to go in and if there are particular URLs or links that we know could be a security risk, we can block those out. So those can't be accessed on our computers. So it becomes a technical filter. It is, um, and it's extremely it's customizable. So it will block what we tell it to block, but that is all. Um, so we so this is a bit of a technicality then. We're not blocking people from content they may want to access, but we do have to say that we are blocking content as in things this, that could be considered malware. So it, it's, it's, a yeah. it's a rewording, it's a technicality. We're not actually cutting people off from the internet. We are not. Um, so okay. in the children's department, um, we are using those computers to install it's not i don't like to use the word filter because that's not how it operates but we want to be very clear that when a person comes into this institution they are able to access the information that they need that will not change okay like we're not we're not blocking keywords if we have somebody who comes in and they're like i need to look at breast cancer and the word breast is filtered they're not going to pull up those websites this is not what this is okay okay this is like if there's a particular issue where it's black cat hacker group is that group you won't be able to get yes. on where a url is they've are using Cyrillic lookalike letters and stuff like that. That would manipulating be manipulating it to so, look yeah. authentic, but mm -hmm. it is not right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? So it's just removing that one line. Yes, that is all. It was passed at the last board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, to break because the, the policy was passed at the last okay. board meeting, okay. so we just have to go through and clean up the rest of our. Yes. So they're not in conflict. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and we, we revised the entire collection statement last year. We made it stronger and more clear, mm -hmm. defining um, what uh, curation looks like in terms of collection development. So I'm feeling really good. We don't have to make any more updates to that. Okay. With that explanation, is there a motion to approve the revised policy? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, I'll give it to Virginia. Virginia gets the second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. It is passed, thank you. Um, the last time a new business was... Uh, hey, I'm sorry, can I, can I ask, a few months ago there was, you know, the um, social media policy that was on our agenda, and of course we didn't get to it that month, but are we... Have we just like postponed that conversation about the social media policy? I don't remember. The, the staff has asked to take some time to revisit that uh, before bringing it back to the to the board. Okay. We, we have not passed anything, but uh, Lee and Susie and Billy asked that they have some time to kind of look at that, re, you know, develop it, um, look at best practice, you know, look at things and before they bring it back to the board. Okay. All right, so, thank you. So, um, yeah. 
So the, the, the last item of, of new business was a discussion about board points. And, th and this came as um, uh, a conversation that Martin Raymond and I had last week. A um, discussion about what I'm sorry. Board goals. Thank you. Um, setting, um, and this would be something like specific um, city that would be outside of necessarily the um, strategic plan and the strategic objectives of the library these would be things specific to um to the board in terms of um and it could be thing, you know these this isn't necessarily um i my 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 idea because this is it we just we just had this last week was not to set them tonight but to begin a conversation about what they may look like in terms of would this be something that we do annual goals, three month goals, six month, you know, what are these pieces look like? Would these be, you know, related to our relationship with the organization or is it sort of how we interact with the community, how we develop ourselves as trustee members, you know, what these pieces can look like, but I wanted to have that and we can, and this can be an item where we have, you know, a whiteboard or, you know, post-its that we, like, cash some of these out at, in December. But to begin that conversation tonight, I think, could be helpful for us to just have this idea, because it's, I feel like this was something we had at some point uh, since I've been on the board, but it has been so long that I have forgotten what it looks like. I want to say that, I, I just want to clarify that if it wasn't, my idea that actually uh, it came up in the board from Maya. Maya said, I think again, it was a few months ago, I don't remember what month where Maya said that we pointed out that outside of a strategic planning meeting, we have not set goals for ourselves. Um, and I have been operating under the assumption that, you know, elections, or whatever, we, but um, after talking, for instance, to um, a contact that Suzanne um, put me, put us in touch with, we had a conversation with the, uh, an Evanston Library Board President, yeah. um, Tracy Fulch, Tracy, Tracy, uh, right, who, who indicated that, that it's really silly to say, she didn't use the word really silly, but I am feeling really silly, that we could just have three month goals. We can yeah. even at this point well, have easy. six month goals, mm -hmm. and that is still well within, for instance, my remaining tenure on the board, you know, and that, and we still may have as many as six months before a new ED is in place. And I understand that we don't want to have like a large strategic conversation, and, and I think that that is makes incredible amount of sense, but we have. There's, it's not like we have no leadership during this time, you know, like I, I just, I, so I, I think that um, it took me a while to hear what Maya said, but I, but I appreciate you bringing it up and I, I would, I, I, I would just like to admit that I think I was wrong about that and I would like for us to have a conversation about what we can do in three months and six months that is about articulating like our common goals and that we're not just sitting around you know well i think it helps our relationship with each other our relationship with staff like in terms of what you're talking about with meeting with them and with our inner meetings yeah so yeah. they have guidance of what our goals are in this period of time yeah and i th i think that i'm hearing from everyone one of our goals is and this is for our December meeting is we want to have questions in place for the staff for a survey that we have promised mm -hmm. um, I think another goal that we want to have is we want to hear from our staff and start to repair that relationship as well as repairing relationships and understanding the hurt within the community um, it's, it's like not going to happen overnight, right? But I think that it's coming up with those first step plans. Um, I, I do think that the survey is probably a, a good first step. So thank you so much, 
Virginia and Matt for, for, for being willing to do that extra work. Um, I, I would say that another thing we might want to do is, you know, well, what about the community? How do we, how do we reach out the community? This is just maybe a very bad idea. I have, I have a, a thing in my work where I always say I put out the bad idea, I put out the bad language so that maybe it will inspire those who are more intelligent and around me to come up with the better idea. Um, but maybe it is, do we need to have, you know, listening sessions where, you know, for a couple um, hours on a weekday, weekend, I don't know, we have two trustees who are sitting and, you know, listening and, and willing to hear from the community. I mean, I, I personally don't think Oak Park is a, a shy community, like they'll find you on the green line. Um, they're, they're like Liam Nielsen. <laughs> um, but sometimes the effort of saying, hey, we're going to have these office hours, right, might be the first step. And it's, it's just to listen, right? And it's not to, we obviously can't make any action with two people, and that wouldn't be a public forum and all that stuff, but at least we can like listen or even like create when I was, um, you know, when I was at Vanderbilt, there was this idea of a black box where it was, you know, kind of a suggestion piece, anonymous, even, you know, anonymous way that people were allowed to write to discuss their experiences on the university. And it was sort of started because of concerns of a lot of primarily African-American, but also Latino, um, and just general persons of color, non-traditional trans um, students were being very specifically uh, targeted to come into this very white university. And then they would leave after a semester or two because the greater Nashville community wasn't particularly accepting because the student body tended to have a little bit more of a traditional roots. And so it was a way that people could just share their experiences in a private manner. And it's that private manner of putting it out there, which sort of becomes the first step of moving forward. I want to also caveat that with like, it has to be done in a pretty respectful manner. Like, I just don't think an open comment on Facebook is a great idea because mm -hmm. people get really nasty on Facebook, bluntly. Keyboard courage. Right, exactly, keyboard courage. But like the idea of like the print out, that black box, that mailbox, like it creates that additional piece of thought that people kind of can put forward mm -hmm. and it can be like and then it could be like do you want to be contacted and the answer might be no but you know my story from someone who worked in that office it was like the answer was no but every month they get a letter for 12 you know for maybe you know a year and a half and then finally on one day someone said you know hey i i'm here and i, I would like to talk to someone and i actually have gotten to a better place just by putting pen to paper. So I'm not saying these are all great things. That was a very limited scope, but those are like two things that we might want to consider. And like that black box essentially being, you know, something that staff can do, something that community can do. Maybe we ask to identify just, are you community? Are you staff? Are you, et cetera. And really make sure that we're trying to be respectful and discreet and it's like you know not necessarily somewhere that there's a camera that people feel uncomfortable with but those are just those are just some ideas oh. that we can put out there uh, virginia's got her hand up yes so, um i want to take a little bit of a step back because i know we've also talked about developmental goals for the board as well how would we feel about treating this internally a little bit the way the library treats our four pillars where we segment off what are the you know four or five overarching initiatives and then we just make sure whatever the timeline is three months six months a year 
we always make sure we're working on something underneath those headings. So we're always working on our own internal development. We're always working on something alongside the staff. We're always working on something in the community. You know, just that way we make sure we're we're doing the breadth of the work and not not focusing too much on one individual thing. Cause that's my that's my next I don't want to say fear, but that we focus on one thing and we lose sight of the other. I, all of these kind of have to be done in tandem. And I don't know how we do that unless we specifically call out like what we need to work on and make sure we have a piece in, in those things. Am I making sense? I might not be. Okay. Yes. I think that's so uh, that's so interesting, you know, because uh, I think that obviously it has to be both, right? Like we have to keep an eye on the larger, larger impulses and goals, and then we have to but articulate like specific things that we want to get done. Yeah. And again, you know, like I, um, I don't know, I I really like your perspective on this, Virginia. I'm trying to think about like um, if if we can like literally assign ourselves certain things for the December meeting or right mm -hmm. or but or mm -hmm. by the January meeting you know like and I mean the training stuff which we had said you know but to be able to come back and say like here are the, like these two things that I have trained on you know like by December like or and a combination of, and I am articulating these goals that are common for everybody, do, do you, or that I think should be common for everybody. So does yeah. that make sense? Like a, a combination of specific tasks and an articulation of a, of a broader vision. Uh, of course, I, I would say, again, being, being very aware that I'm not going to be here like come next May, that I, I don't think it is entirely appropriate for us to talk about long-term goals that extend beyond the the year that really should be like what the new what the new i think the only the only long-term the only long-term thing i have would be things we've already talked about like i know christine talked about a couple months ago getting our archives organized mm -hmm. that's going to be a long-term project no matter what because yeah. there's just a lot of it um but I don't think that that's necessarily board member specific. I think we were actually doing that with the eye of making future board members' lives easier or like right. identifying different kinds of training. No, we might not all be able to do it, but if we can lay out where those things are, obviously future board members can choose what they want to do, but we will have identified some of that stuff. So I agree with you, Madarima. I don't think any of the like specifics need to be things that we are that we are picking out, but the same way that we do strategic thinking when we're looking at the library goals, I think we can do strategic thinking in looking at our own goals and pick categories that are broad enough that we feel like we've touched our areas of responsibility. And and again, I, I know we've talked about this a lot as well, like making sure that we're spreading out the work of keeping that up among the entire board. Yeah. I like the idea of kind of having buckets and then maybe very briefly, I think all of us on the board can be long winded at times. If we could just like, like have an ability to report out, like if we've made progress, like if we had, like it sounded like maybe professional development community, like advocacy, I would like to go back to try to figure out, um, you know, childcare stipend stuff. Um, like there are things that I think we, we've started and stopped along the way and so I don't know it, I wonder if like a an easy lift might just be if we allowed space in a meeting to say like if these are our goals maybe they align with the strategic plan that we made like you said um then like does anyone have any updates to share this month and and everyone can just kind of respond very briefly like yes I did the OMA training you know at the end um I mean, I know this is this is something that I've kind of been thinking about the last couple of months. I've seen it um, actually where where I work, but taking a look at our agenda and assigning estimated time periods for each of these so that we feel like, hey, if we've talked about this for 30 minutes, 
and we don't feel like we're closer to a resolution, that means we need to go do our own individual research or there might be other steps we need to take. Um, but I think that also will help us to start to make sure we're not stacking too much in any one agenda. Like if we just sort of default that, you know, every additional report is five minutes. If we start seeing that there are seven, eight, nine things there and we're multiplying that by five, we'll start to see, you know, where where do we need to do something else? Where do we need to stretch things out? Where do we need to reprioritize or spread things out to other months? So, because I, I also know, you know, when we're talking about engaging the community, some community members cannot attend our meetings because if they go until 10 o'clock at night, that's not something that they're able to engage with. And I think that's also gonna be a barrier in the future to us getting folks who are able to be on the board. So I would like to be cognizant of that. And then Christina, to your point, I think then we can build in time and say, okay, do we have time to go through and like check off or is it something where we all decide we're gonna send something to the secretary who compiles it and puts it in the packet because we look at our agenda and go, you know, no, Sorry to volume told you, <laughs> um, but you know, is that, is that something where we look at our agenda and say like, no, we don't have five minutes times seven people to add to this. Um, let's do something asynchronously and just make sure that it's all reported in the, in the packet for the community. So I think we have a lot of options. I also don't think we have to start everything all at once. Like we have two or three things that we picked out. I think that's a good place to start and then let's just have a place where we compile the master Christmas list of things we need to do and organize it as we go and just make sure we're we're always adding new things to it. I was interested in a comment that Nat made um, at the recent meeting when he was talking about distributing uh, or looking for signatures for his candidacy and he, he basically said you know the people that I talked to really didn't seem to be all that angry they, that, that they loved the library. And I just wonder, Matt, if you could um, kind of think about this, the sampling that you were talking to. And as we, as we think about reaching out to marginalized communities, I, um, could, you, could you articulate a little bit more on that? Sure. Uh, it was largely uh, folks up in the northeast part of Oak Park uh, around Hatch School. It was a lot of the parents there. Um, I also collected uh, at meetings of the Democratic Party of Oak Park. Uh, was a lot, got a lot of signatures there, and around my uh, around got a, a little bit over around Lincoln School. Um, but those were the, the main two parts around Hat around Hatch School parents mm -hmm. and the Democratic Party were the were the two populations that I got the majority of my signatures. Um, so that was, but that was, but that was, you know, my anecdote is not data. Um, right. You know, exactly. it's, it's you know, it's not fully representative of of all of the of all of Oak Park, but it's it is. It is it is a segment. It is not it is not what should be driving all of our decisions uh, in that. And, uh, but I wanted to come back to um, the talk of like the town. You know the idea of like a listening session with two with two trustees. I know D ninety seven has done that mm -hmm. recently um, around a number of things. And I, I will from members of the community I know that I spoke to who went to those. I think that they they were not they were frustrated by what they felt was not a real dialogue from it they they were under the impression that it was going to be more of a dialogue with members of the board and in talking out and talking through issues that were going on and the board members were more of under the impression it seemed that it was a listening session to for them to the community and i think and, and for me, I'm bringing this up as should we pursue that? And I think that is a worthwhile way to do it. I think there there is there is value that we can we can take in from that. I just want to make sure that we are setting up 
proper communication and expectation with those who attend those so that they know what they're walking into. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that is a, it is a way to take people who are not frustrated with us and make them frustrated with us. Mm -hmm. um, who, want to, who want to share something and are hoping for some kind of answer. And I think that as, as long as there's an expectation of there are things that we can provide some clarity on, but this will, that it, you know, and we can set that, we can set that agenda and that scope of it, as I see the word scope in front of me, um, as I grab that, but in terms of just making that clear, and I think we, we have talked about that a lot over the, you know, as we go through the executive director search and all these other pieces, is making sure that there are clear expectations um, and those are, that are, they are communicated so that people know what they're getting into when they walk in the room um, and don't think that it's going to be something it's not. Because um, I, I want them to be valuable. I want that time to be well spent for everyone involved, that they feel like they've contributed, that they have contributed, that we're hearing them providing some feedback from our perspective and that everyone leaves informed in some way. So I just want to make sure that if we do do that, that that is a piece that I heard from the D97 experience that I want us to avoid repeating. Yeah. It, it's, it's key to learn from the mistakes of others. Easy to learn from your own mistakes. The trick is learning from others. Would it be helpful to have like a topic for a listening session? To, to at least start that, like if we have a listening that session. That could be to help keep it narrow, because otherwise it could get very unwieldy. And it could be yeah. like we have, you know, two or three of them and say, this is the topic that, you know, please try and keep it to these one or two items so we can keep it focused and productive as opposed to wide ranging. Right. I mean, that's, I, so I, I, and I, I mean, I will say that, um, in my experience, it's always helped to assign homework so that if there were, a, you know, like when I say if there's a topic, but there's like something that people can refer to so that we're all on the same ground, mm -hmm. it would be great. But I am also worried that if we, if we, if we have listening sessions with the community, which I think is a general greater good, but we have not yet had any listening sessions with staff. I, it just, it's not sitting well with me right now. Like, d does that make sense? Like, I feel like... I, no, I, I think that makes absolute sense. I guess I hesitate a little bit because of comfort level. That's why the black box I suggested, you know, in large part and the survey, because staff may not feel comfortable Coming in forward. Sorry. Yeah. The wine box. The, the box. Suggestion box. Suggestion box, sure. Communication box, something. Yeah, that's fine. The communication um, a box. But at the same time, like, I feel like there's. Um, would, would a staff feel as comfortable coming to a board member? if they were truly angry about what happened. And that's why it's like maybe the box is like that outlet they can share. Some people will, some people will. Well, I mean, some we people, were all here for yeah. the board meeting. Yes, where there some people no are very, of very comfortable. Some will be very comfortable to just come forward and yell or My biggest or concern not. is what Matt said. I think like, I worry that it's going to be, um, we're not going to be able to talk explicitly about the things that people are going to ask us about, right. and I worry that our non-answers are actually going to make things more worse. Frustrating. And I just don't know how to get around that. And I like really do want everyone to hear me say this, like, there is stuff that we can't say. If we could say it, I think people would feel differently. And so I just like, I, I'm like kind of against the idea because I'm just going to want to scream the truth. Yeah. And I can't do that. So 
Well, I mean, and, and the background. word goals don't have to include a listening session, <clears throat> or it could be to articulate a pattern that if there is a library initiative that the board is excited about, that we have a listening session around that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I just, so I don't know if we're there yet. No. So, yeah. so then let's think about it, yeah. or let's see. Yeah, I just want the regular conversation about what we should be doing, and then choose a couple of things every month, yeah. either as individually or as a board to actually make some movement and, on that. And you need to, you know, in terms of what Matt brought up about um, people being frustrated that it was not a dialogue. That's been our experience in public comment before. Yeah. It's been our experience with emails. When I go to public events now, which I just did this weekend, that I'm hearing from people in the community frustration about never hearing back on something or emails or you know, the, like the not hearing back is a is a concern and as a seven member board individually we can't really do that so how do we how do we help the the flow of at least for people to feel that they're being heard and that we are taking their position seriously um, we have a history unfortunately of of people not getting emails back and of, yeah I, I think that's a I think that's a a big concern and I think there's a there's an awful lot of listening session thing that's happening out in the world and in workplaces and in communities that is shallow and I don't want to step to into repeat that that um, particularly given what we're, we're up against, you know, and it's tough. It, it's really tough because, you know, we when we break down our areas and when we did for the, um, the ED search, you know, staff and community and board, like there's this dynamic relationship among all of this and they're sometimes in opposition as we've seen, you know. Um, there's people in the community that still feel hurt by people on staff saying things like a small vocal minority. And that's something I hear when I'm in public spaces. So yeah, um, I, want, I want for us to engage with staff and I want for us to engage with community. We all on the board care deeply about these relationships. We really do. Um, but how do we how do we do it in a way that that isn't just one directional or I don't know I do think uh, having an anonymous way to receive written I, though I wonder about having it just written because of accessibility etc. I I think we start with the survey and and yeah. see what comes out and then this is the staff survey yeah, yeah. I, I think just don't know that we can do much before then and I. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm with you guys. I wish it were different, and <laughs> I wish that these relationships were in the state that they're in. But um, I yes. also think like forcing something is is can be worse. Yeah. I mean, so, honestly, I don't want us to. Sorry, I don't want us to bite off more than we can successfully chew right now. I think we've identified. You know, Matt sent out the poll about um, training and developmental opportunities um in my brain that goes in one bucket um we are working to finalize the staff survey that goes in another bucket maybe those are our two things for the next 30 days and we have to asynchronously start pulling together our own other initiatives that we think we need to tackle over the next whenever and then we start to bucket them because I think right now we're we're going at things piecemeal and then we're going to have to put them in order and then I feel like we're going to get overwhelmed and then things are going to fall off our plate again and I, yeah, I, don't want, to I want to I want to really really second that as strongly as I possibly can because I feel like um I think even given especially given the elections there's like a, a there's like a, an emotional threshold that is completely different 
And what I think it means practically for our work is that it may come down to we really need to solve racism in like the next few months, you know, and that's not going to happen. And that's not, you, do you know what I mean? And then we'll feel absolutely awful. Like how come we didn't solve racism in four months, you know? And I, and it's not just about me not feeling awful, but to, to give us like things that we can. So uh, again, to, if we, if it's a conversation about board goals, can we at least just commit to, if we are able to think about it, to come up with like maybe just like one idea for for next meeting, you know, and yeah. we as just an like individual, right? Yeah, yeah, as an individual, so, you know. Do you want like because you're taking the helm with the um, search committee? Do you want? I'm happy to like just follow up with folks to respond to something. Yes, do you want that would be yes, that would be wonderful. Thank I can you do that. That's within my capacity. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for volunteering yourself. <laughs> And I would just and, and I'll follow up with with, with Virginia and Margaret were just saying is I was just having a conversation earlier today about a time when I was just saying yes to everything mm -hmm. and not doing a lot of those things well. Mm -hmm. And once I started saying no to some things mm -hmm. and being honest of what was in my capacity, the fewer things I was doing, I was doing a lot better. And I think that that I think that fits um, coincidentally within this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like just to sum up, because I, I, I feel like we could keep talking about this, um, but I would like to just make sure I'm summing up so that we have clear next steps for you know stepping out of this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we're all going to come up with one goal for ourselves. Um, that we're going to bring to the December meeting. Um, please. Uh, Is that one goal for ourselves or one more goal for the board? How, for ourselves. We yeah. were talking, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, well, I'm just like, I'll talk to you and maybe. How about this? At least one for ourselves. One for ourselves. And if you have an idea for a board goal, bring that to December yeah. and we can work, work those collectively together. Um, also, please, the Survey Monkey. Um, uh, I know a couple people have responded, but not everyone. Um, if you're not, if you don't feel like you have anything to contribute, that's cool. Um, a few people have, the few people have responded. There's already some overlap on on a few things, um, but please take a look at it. Um, and then I'll, I'll pull together some resources on. The common elements that are that are most you know appear in everything. I'll make sure everyone sees everything that was submitted anonymously, you know, so that we can all see what everyone was, you know, what the thinking was across the whole board, so that we all kind of be like, oh no, yeah, I do like that idea, so that we can all see that together. Um, anything else going into the December meeting? Survey. Survey. Yes, you and I are working on the. We'll be working on the survey. Um, I will connect with you, and we will try and find uh, find a time that we can perhaps loop in with Holistic to uh, work with that. I've asked um, while we were talking. I did send an email to Susie and Lee asking for a copy of from Billy of the surveys that we do already internally that have done so that we're not. We're limiting uh, repetitiveness of <laughs> questions that are already being asked. You know, there might be touch points that we may want to like cross reference, but generally we don't want to just, re you know, we, the staff should not be opening up saying, oh, I answer these questions all the time already. We want them to be know that this is a true thing that we want feedback in and it shouldn't be repetitive of other stuff they're doing. Um, so I've asked for that. Um, so we can, you know, piece those down. Um, thank you for catching me on that, uh, Virginia. Anything else? Um, well, there was the whole end racism thing, right? Can we put that on And you can be, and we'll throw in a, a world piece. Sure. Yeah, that'd yeah, be great. If we have time. We'll all get it to in January yeah. if that's okay. I'm, I'm reminded suddenly of the end of the movie Sneakers and, and uh, David's right there and asking uh, and James Earl Jones to uh, Peace on Earth, Good World Towards Men. Um, that was the important
Okay. Yes, he was also in that, but James Earl Jones was Mr. Abbott. He was the CIA guy at the end of the movie. That's right. Okay. Anyway. Are we doing a closed session or no? No, but there is there, there's no closed session of business tonight. Fabulous. Uh, with that, unless there are any objections, we have concluded our business and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are no objections. <laughs>